Web Studio now supports exporting your dynamic sites with a Docker file, enabling you to host your site virtually anywhere. In this tutorial, you're going to see how to set up your Web Studio site on AWS using Flight Control. Flight Control is a platform as a service that deploys to AWS, but you don't have to deal with AWS, so you get all of that power without the complexity. We're going to break this down into six different steps. A lot of it is just moving things around. It's not very complicated, um, but the prerequisites are that you already have a GitHub account, an AWS account, and I'm actually going to sign up for flight control right here on video. We're first going to create a GitHub repository. Then we're going to get our code from Web Studio and put it into that repository. Once we have the code in GitHub, we are going to create a web server in flight control. And then it's going to deploy. It's going to take a little time. And after that, our site is going to be live. You can optionally add a custom domain if you want to. And then from there, you can just continue to sync your changes locally, push them to GitHub, and that'll trigger the uh, server to update. OK, so we'll break it down step by step. And let's start with first creating a GitHub repository. New repository, I'm going to call it Docker Web Studio. I I'm just going to make it private and create the repository. And I am going to clone this locally using GitHub Desktop. You can do it however you want. Okay, now that we have our repository local, we need to put some code in there. And we're going to get that from Web Studio using the CLI. There's documentation linked here on how to install the CLI. But for right now, I'm going to head over to my terminal and CD into my new project and run Web Studio init. And I want to use the current folder. And then now we need a share link. So it needs to know what project do we want to put there. So I'm going to go up to share, create a new share link and give it build permissions. And I'm just going to name this Docker just so we always know where, what the links are for. Copy it, go back to terminal, paste it. And you can see here that we have a Docker template. So let's select that. Um, we actually don't need to install the dependencies. So I'm going to skip that. Oh, and I got an error because I haven't published this. It's a new project. So first, I just need to publish it. OK, I published it. We're just going to rerun that Docker. And now those files are in my local repository. I'm going to open up GitHub Desktop, see it's there. And I'm just going to give it a commit message and publish this branch. I am working with a larger site right here. This is the Web Studio site. So there's a lot to it. There's a lot of images. And so some of these steps are going to take more time. I'm currently committing all of my assets to my repository right now. So, you know, that inherently is just going to take some time. OK, now that code should be in GitHub. So let's look at our steps here. We've exported the project. We've pushed it to GitHub. Now let's create a web server in Flight Control. So here is the Flight Control website. I am going to start for free. All right, let's create a new account. And here it wants us to authenticate with AWS. I am good to go. We'll click Create Stack and acknowledge the terms. All right, there was some error there, but we'll see if that ends up impacting it. Looks like that was successful. I had to wait just a little bit. Now let's connect it to GitHub. And I'm only going to select the exact repository I want it to have access to. Got my repository there. Let's install and authorize. I'm going to click my repository. And feel free to change the region, but I'm good with that. And we're going to click build your own web server and then just all of the defaults. And now we're just going to wait a little bit as it provisions. So right now it's going to AWS and it's setting up all of the necessary services. The estimated time right now is about 12 minutes. So I'll check back in when that is done. It is live. If we're living right, we should be able to go to our new web server. And here we have domains. You can add a custom domain. I'm going to use the built in one. And that's our site. This is pretty awesome. So we've got our full Web Studio site here, and it is dynamic. So we've got our CMS integrations. Uh, we even have image optimization. So the first time you load the page, it's going to create optimized images and then cache those on the CDN. So that is it for step five. Step six, you might be wondering what happens when you make changes in the cloud builder and want to get them over to AWS slash flight control. Well, what you'll do is make those changes, click publish. And even if you're not publishing to the Web Studio Cloud, that publish is necessary to get the latest build ID from the project. Once you have that, you just do Web Studio Sync, get push. So Web Studio Sync will get that latest data down to your local machine and then get push will put that latest data into your GitHub repository. And from there, Flight Control will take care of the rest and make sure that your website gets updated with the latest changes.
Now you should have your dynamic Web Studio site hosted on AWS because of flight control. And with the latest addition to the CLI, you can now export your Web Studio project with a Docker file, enabling you to deploy your project anywhere that containers are supported, which is basically any server. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.